Thank you for joining me for this video about how to make your money work harder. And what I want to do is go beyond what everyone else says and really look at how the snowball effect affects your finances. Now, the snowball effect is actually one of the most important factors in your personal finance because it helps to explain both good and bad outcomes. And if we understand this idea, we can put it to work for us rather than having it work against us. Now, you may think I'm just going to be talking about compound interest, but I'm going to be doing it from a different perspective. And that's the real way that the snowball effect comes into play for you. So if you were to roll a snowball downhill, you know what happens. It gets bigger as it goes. It just keeps accumulating more and more snow as it goes. And a small snowball rolling down a large hill in just the right conditions can become rather large. Now, if your goal is to create a large snowball, the snowball effect is beneficial to you. If your goal is to avoid getting run over by a snowball and you happen to be standing in its path, it can be damaging to you. You can control those conditions, though. If you see it coming at you, you can take action to get out of the way. So there is a bad snowball, and credit card debt is a classic example. Um, I looked up the average interest rate on credit card debt, and the average is 19% a year. So if you have a balance of $10,000, that's about $158 a month in interest. Paying $150 results in owing more next month. So even if you don't spend, once you get into this debt trap, it can snowball the debt, the liability issue, is something that municipalities all across the country are facing as their pension shortfall is now snowballing. They have not contributed enough for many years. This is true for many states, cities, counties, education districts. It's just snowballing now. It was a small problem 10 or 20 years ago. It is now a big problem and getting bigger. There are steps that can be taken, and the earlier that you act, when you see a snowball coming at you, the less damage it will do. So that's how we usually think of the snowball effect. The good snowball is compound interest. I don't think Albert Einstein ever actually said this, but the story is that he called it the eighth wonder of the world. And if you understand it, you earn compound interest. If you don't, you pay it. That's the credit card snowball. You pay for the snowball effect. Compound interest just means you earn interest on your interest. So if you take 10% a year interest, you have $1,000, you earn $100 a year. After five years, that $1,000 grows to $1,500. If you let it ride, so to speak, if you allow the interest to compound, that 10% compound interest gives you $1,610 after five years. It's like an extra year's interest. So you don't do anything. Your money does something. Your money works for you. Time illustrates the value of compounding. I have many friends who are financial advisors, and they are wonderful people, but they use examples like this all the time. So, as we just saw, if you invest 10% a year for five years, your wealth increases by 60%. Imagine you did it for 50 years. Your wealth increases by more than 11,600%. That's a lot of wealth. $1,000 grows to more than $117,000. All it takes is 10% in 50 years, neither one of which is really reasonable for most of us. The problem here is many of us don't have 50 years to retirement. Maybe, like me, you're over 
30 or even 40 or even 50. If you're over 50, you don't want to work another 50 years. You want to enjoy retirement relatively soon. So compounding increases wealth period by period. And this is the important point that I think so many people miss about compounding. One year is certainly a time period, but there's nothing in stone saying you must compound over an annual basis. The key is you just want to put your money to work for you and turn it over. High frequency trading is simply high frequency compounding. So high frequency trading firms make trades with short holding periods and all they're trying to do is gain a small amount of money. They measure their holding periods in milliseconds or even nanoseconds. Now for perspective, blinking your eye takes about 400 milliseconds. During that time, a high frequency trading firm could be in and out of a stock four times or more. So by the time you blink your eye, they are compounding wealth, assuming they get it right. Now on average, they're shooting for a gain of about a 20th of a cent per share. That doesn't sound like much. 0 0.0005 cents per share, a 20th of a cent. But let's say they trade a billion shares a day. That's half a million dollars. That's the idea of compounding. Just keep that money working. Even if all you make is that small amount, but you do it repeatedly, it adds up to an awful lot of money over time. They're compounding in milliseconds. Um, that's just an example of how it's done. They're increasing their wealth through the snowball effect over time. They're just thinking of time differently than the financial advisor friends I have who focus on years. And let's be honest, the reason they do that is because they collect 2% a year. So they don't want to break it down into seconds and have to collect their fees more frequently. They want their jobs to be easy. High frequency trading firms actually spend a lot of time reinvesting their profits in a technology war with other firms. So their gains are compounded to allow them to stay in their game. But they're increasing wealth faster. Now, this isn't just theoretical. Renaissance's Medallion Fund is probably the most successful hedge fund in history. And they've generated 66% a year average annual gain. They charge outrageous fees after their high fees, which are about 5% management fee, about 40% of profits for some investors. 39% annualized returns. Now, remember, financial advisors will tell you shoot for 10%. Well, you don't have to. Renaissance didn't. They turn over their money rapidly. And by turning over their money rapidly, they're able to make four times as much as what most investors would think of as average. This allows $1 to grow to $520 in 20 years. Or in the S&P 500, that $1 can grow to $20. That's still good. And if you have enough of those $1 in the S&P 500, you can retire on those kind of gains. But the idea of keeping your money at work can be very beneficial. Now, we aren't high-frequency trading firms as individual investors. We can't trade that fast. They have special hardware. They have specialized access to data and execution. We can't do that. We also can't get the low-cost capital that they get. Renaissance makes that much money because they trade with extreme leverage, 10, 11 times to every dollar that they have. As an individual, banks aren't going to give us that much 
low cost capital so that we can boost our returns. What we can do is short term trading. That way we're turning over our money maybe two or three times a year and we're compounding our gains three times faster in that example than if we just allowed it to target 10% a year. Maybe we target 10% every six months and try to compound our wealth twice as fast. That's not for everybody. Long-term investors, however, can also snowball gains. There are specialized strategies that can help traders outperform typical buy and hold gains. Now, my colleagues here will be talking about this more in other videos. So if you want to learn more, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.